Buffalo. Well, this is it. Last bat. He's got 0 0.4 to go. After this, he should be good. He's on weight, 140. Sure. I gotta take my drawers off or whatever. It's there. Bird small as a motherfucker right now. <laughs> <laughs> little, little right now. I'll shrivel up and shit. I'm shriveled like a motherfucker. Hold on. Let me get a slow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Give me that motherfucking shit. Point two. Point two. Point two. Damn. That's good for future. It's good for future records as well. We got a motherfucking fight. Just try it with your briefs on, just to see you know as well. Yeah. Same thing. Thug it. That was the best fucking cut ever, man. Thank you. No, that's all him. That's everything he's done the last couple of weeks that led up to that right there. Fuck you, success, bro. Success. 35. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I love it. Go ahead. Nice work, Lee. Look, yeah. Okay. Four more pounds. <laughs> right below the money, man. He was one pound under. So 139. Contracted at 140. He only did two bats. We were expecting to do three. So it's been a, it's been a perfect cut. It's been really good. Feel good. I'm good right now. We got an hour. Waiting an hour and that's it. I'm good, baby. I ain't make waiting three years. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't hit one forty in three fucking years. God damn. Like for me, I didn't make weight in since 2019. You know what I'm saying? So it's 2022. That was the last time I made 140. So my last two, if people don't know my last two fights, um, I missed weight, right? And at the first my, my first fight after 2019 was my my excuse was that I didn't make it in the whole year and you know that was my my big excuse or whatever and then the second time I didn't make weight that's when I kind of realized like I need to um, I need to do something about it. Talk to my accountant, you would think we bought the black. I remember having dreams of being fresh with polo socks. Just a young and on the mission with specifics matching blacks. I didn't see too many murders, but now where they shine and watch. Saw the riches hustling niggas fall a victim to the black. Wish that I can put my hands together, make the brain stop. But the city losing hope, we going broke, you people shot. Got a million changing niggas' visions. Way in day, I went to the way in. And I know everybody was kind of looking at me. Everybody was expecting me to like miss weight because that's what everybody kind of was saying. Because the last two fights, I missed weight, so everybody was expecting me to miss weight. Man, I got on the scales. I got. I went. I got on the scales. 138.8 with my. You know, usually I have to strip and take my drawers off and all that stuff. With my drawers on, I got on the scale, and then everybody like, I didn't see McKenna's face, and I didn't see you know his trainer's face, but. Um, other people say they saw him and they, he was like kind of shocked. They say he was shocked because like everybody expected me to like miss weight and I didn't miss weight and I felt strong. So, I mean, that whole process was like smooth and it's just reassured, it reaffirmed everybody like, you know, I'm standing at 140 and I'm here and you got to see me. Everybody got to see me. You want to come to 140, you got to see me and I, I'm not going to miss weight no more. I'm strong. I feel good. And that's what it is. Um. Just the mock weigh-in. We did the weigh-in early this morning, so there's just the mock weigh-in just for the fans and stuff like that. We gonna do the mock weigh-in. They are gonna announce the weights, and then we gonna face off for the last time. Until until fight night. Yeah, I mean, so the mock weigh-in after that, it was like two hours after the original weigh-in. So we did the mock weigh-in um, just for the fans and stuff, and of course, you know, like we got together and. I mean, the thing is, bro, Tyron, he was he was actually a cool dude. You know, I didn't have nothing against him or nothing like that. He was like a cool dude throughout the whole thing. Of course, we talked a little, you know, we talked a little trash to each other. That's natural. That's what I do anyway. I, I like to get people face and talk a little trash before we fight. But, you know, he was, I mean, the dude was cool, respectful, all that stuff. And, um... You know, he, he was just like, man, you're going to, like, his thing was like, you're going to break your hand on my face. 
I was like, bro, really? That's what that's what we was kind of laughing. I was like laughing. I'm like, bro, really? This is what you this is your plan for me to hurt my hand so I can't fight. So tomorrow evening, final eliminator for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Belfast Tyrone McKenna, USA's Arugaru Regis Progress. Walked away and we got that over with. That's my last time seeing him before we fight tomorrow. Talk a little shit, you know what I'm saying? But now it's time to eat. All that's done, not tomorrow. Fight time tomorrow. Once they call me, we in a lobby, and everybody, we all we all got our team gear on, and it's like, it, it's ready for war. It's like battle time, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it is. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like that with everybody. You, you, I got my head down, and it's like war time. No more jokes. Everything serious is just all about going to war at that time. So for the people, I think for the fans that never experienced this, the closest thing, I think, a movie you can get to it is like when, um, like Gladiator, when Russell Crowe walked out and all those gladiators walked out and you, you know, he was looking at all the gladiators for the first time and one of the dudes was like peeing on themselves. you know what I'm saying? They was about to, it's not that extreme, but that's kind of the feelings. Like, you know, you going into war, this is like, this is man versus man. Nobody can help you at the end of the day. It's no teamwork, it's just, you know, you got your team behind you, but it's only me and my, and, and, and my opponent in the ring. And, you know, it's it's the last man standing. And that's kind of, that's kind of your mindset. So you got to mentally, prepare for that you know you go through all these motions you go through training camp and it's all cool and it you know and it's still hard and all that but nothing still could prepare you to go in that ring for fight night it's just with those little gloves on with no head gear on it's it's a scary feeling but at, at the same time um you like with the with the fear aspect it's just the, you gotta let the fear um work for you instead of against you <laughs>